FTN Team Preview Series sponsored by Boom Fantasy. Where you are ready to rock and roll? We have Jesse Newell here from the Kansas City Star. The only person I go to for information on the Chiefs. Obviously, back-to-back and a belly-to-belly Super Bowl champs. We need to get the insight. Don't forget here that the FTN Team Preview Series sponsored by Boom Fantasy. Top choice for daily fantasy sports action. Most innovative gains. I cater to those casual and hardcore fans. Went up to 500 times that entry only at Boom Fantasy. Download the App Store or Google Play. Use that promo code FTN to get a no-sweat bonus up to $100. Jesse, great to have you here. Let's start with the big injury. Wide receiver, Hollywood Brown. You came on before. Great things going on here in the offseason. Suffered an injury recently. Doesn't look to be as bad as maybe we thought right away. Give us an update on Hollywood Brown's situation for the Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, uh, how Andy Reid described it was exact same injury that Tyree Kill had back in 2019. Interestingly enough, he also injured it at Jacksonville. So Chiefs have had some bad luck there playing games against the Jaguars. But it seems like be about four to six weeks is kind of the projected timeline for that. So potentially going to miss the opener, maybe week two, depending on how it heals. Still up in the air right now. But it does kind of throw things a little bit into flux uh, when it comes to the Chiefs receiver room. Hollywood was going to be a guy they relied upon. It was going to be obviously part of the, the mix from week one. But uh, they have Justin Watson stepped into that spot right now. And like I said, uh, the, the short term or the big picture of this is basically that uh, Hollywood Brown seems to have avoided serious injury. That's the biggest thing for the Chiefs. But week one, week two, uh, up in the air. And that means other guys will have to step up. The other two guys I want to talk about. Last time we talked, Xavier Worthy, I believe, was on the sideline or was working through an injury. That seems to have recovered. And Rasheed Rice, who, Jesse, you do such a great job marrying the NFL and fantasy when you come on. Obviously, a huge value if he doesn't get suspended. So how has Worthy looked? And any updates on Rasheed Rice here? Yeah, let's start with Rasheed. Uh the update is that there is no update and that the NFL typically seems to wait until everything has gone through with the legal system before they give out their punishment. And so it sure seems like Rasheed Rice for now, um, at least in the short term here, you can't really anticipate a suspension or, or all of his legal things coming into a conclusion. So it, it sure seems like he could be out there for the, the full season this year, at least as we stand right now. And unquestionably, even with Hollywood Brown in there, Rasheed Rice has been the best receiver in Chiefs camp. So if there's still a dip there and you're talking fantasy, I'm, I'm buying that dip. He is their best receiver. He is the one that they will go to, again, other than Travis Kelsey, who, who is a tight end. Uh, but, you know, like I said, if, if you're still be able to buy low there, uh, we can't predict or exactly know the future with this. But as it stands right now, uh, they're preparing Rasheed Rice to be ready for week one. And I, I don't see him potentially being out this season unless something changes or something speeds up the timeline. As far as Xavier Worthy goes, he's looked good in camp. Uh, the Chiefs have really emphasized throwing the ball downfield. I would just throw a little bit of caution into him. It seems to me like he's going to be kind of a, a boomer bust sort of thing because obviously we know he gets uh, loose on those deep routes. They'll need him more with Hollywood Brown out, but uh, offensive coordinator Matt Nagy kind of keeps repeating. He says the thing he has to keep reminding Xavier of is like it's not all going to come immediately. They're working for the long haul. They want him to be good not only this year but years in the future, and sometimes it takes some time to develop that chemistry with Patrick Mahomes uh, and guys like that. So uh, I would just caution with him, again, for dynasty stuff, for, for being a long-term asset. The Chiefs have big plans for him. I don't know if it's going to happen right away, and there could be some ups and downs with early games where he might not have the production as other guys because his balls are going to be the ones deep downfield. As fantasy football players, we sit here and live and breathe on every word that you say, Jesse, and Andy Reid says, trying to interpret it. I could not be any higher on Isaiah Pacheco. And Andy Reid talked about his pass protection, three down skill set. Behind him, Clyde Edwards Hilaire certainly seems to be like every so often just getting a breather. Daenerick Prince got run there earlier in the year when we were talking in the offseason. They've tried some new players. Talk about Pacheco his touch share, and the backup situation here for Kansas City. Yeah. um, Again, we only know what we can know and what we see out here at training camp at Missouri Western and St. Joseph. But um, I'm I'm totally with you on Pacheco because, especially if you're talking PPR leagues, uh, he went in the offseason. He worked with a receiving coach. He's worked on his hands, and we've seen him out here more catching, more passes. It's really never been a big part of his game, but we saw toward the end of last season that she started to implement him more in doing that. And now – uh, in, in training camp, it's been uh, a bigger part of his game. Not only that, uh, Patrick Mahomes mentioned this in one of his press conferences, said that the Chiefs are having him more run different types of routes this year than they did a season ago. So I'm definitely with you with Pacheco. The injury risk is there. 
Um, but that's sort of what you buy with fantasy with a, a potential workhorse back. And that's what Pacheco seems to be right now for the Chiefs. And again, more involved in the pass game, especially kind of raises your eyebrow if you're in those PPR leagues. I, I would be definitely buying on Pacheco based off what we've seen there. The backup position is is kind of up in the air. Um, Clyde edwards Zelaire has been very open and honest about having PTSD, but uh, he's missed about half the training camp practices out here because of that while he's recovering from that. So, um, you know, his status with the Chiefs right now is kind of up and down and up and down. And then uh, the kind of the talk of camp has been Carson Steele, uh, you know, the uh, guy from UCLA, the rookie running back, fullback, and uh, he has a pet alligator, has become a fan favorite with his blonde locks, all those sorts of things. But had the Chiefs' most impressive run in the preseason, a 20-yard run where he broke three tackles. So they're giving him a long look at the backup position. But even having said that, I don't know who the Jarek McKinnon back is for them, the third down back who can pass protect and go catch a pass out of the backfield. Maybe that's Pacheco, but you're putting him on the field for a lot of snaps if that's the case. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Chiefs are maybe late waiver wire guys to go look and see who's out there on the wire after cuts are made. But uh, right now that running back position beside, behind Pacheco is unsettled, and uh, that's another reason maybe to take Pacheco and fantasy drafts is to basically say that uh, this guy is ready for a big role. Just you need to protect the legend that is Patrick Mahomes' offensive line. There was an injury yesterday. Looks like it was okay, I think. Talk about the offensive line, how that's coming together here in front of Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, the Jawan Taylor one, uh, there was a report of him with a shoulder injury, and it was interesting. They were doing one-on-one -on -one drills. They do defensive line versus O-line. I noticed that Jawan wasn't in a right tackle, and I was asking, well, well, where's Jawan? I looked over to the side, and he was talking to one of his teammates, and no trainers around, just kind of standing there with holding his pads. I thought, oh, you know, it seems okay to me. And then, you know, a few minutes later, we get a report that, you yeah, know, he's he's being carted up. It's kind of interesting here at Chiefs practices. They practice down a hill, so if you're injured at all, they cart you up. You know what I mean? They don't want to mess with that sort of thing. So it doesn't seem serious. Andy Reid said today at his press conference that uh, they don't expect that to be serious. So I, I would anticipate him being fully fine for the opener. The big question mark for the Chiefs is left tackle. And uh, Kingsley Suomataia, their second-round rookie they traded up for, has been impressive in camp. We're going to see more from him uh, the second game against Detroit. You know, usually Andy Reid plays the starters about a quarter, maybe just a touch more in the second preseason game. But he only got six or seven snaps in that first game. But he's won this job. I mean, they were talking about a competition competition between him and second year player Wanye Morris, but uh, Kingsley's taken that and run with it. So be interested to see more from him in there, but they love his athleticism and love how he's learned so far here at camp. And so that'll be the big question mark on Patrick Mahomes' left side. We know Mahomes is so good about avoiding sacks, no matter who's in front of him. So they have a little bit of a curve to work with, but uh, look at that left side for the Chiefs because that'll be a big position, not only getting settled this year, but potentially the future as well if Suamata Ia is who they think he is. And Jesse, you called it when we were going into the draft about somebody they were targeting and you nailed it with Sua Montia. Last question, we'll get you out of here. You're always so generous with your time. Veterans like Derrick Henry and Travis Kelsey, those are players who are legends or future Hall of Famers. But I just wonder if you've heard any rumblings about possibly reducing Travis Kelsey's workload during the season to keep him fresh for the playoffs. Obviously, future first ballot Hall of Famer. It's just he's so critical to what they do. He's been so great. He was great in the, in the Super Bowl runs the last two years. Just curious if that's been discussed or listen, he's on the field. He's a legend. We're going to play him. Any insight there with Travis Kelsey, of course, one of the best of all time. So it goes both ways. Um, the Chiefs saw last year when he took the week 17 off against the Chargers, and then he was so much better in the playoffs. He had an extra mm -hmm. spring in his step. But the problem is, even Patrick Mahomes discussed this today at the podium, is when they ask him to take a playoff, and in, in, even in training camp out here in St. Joseph where it's hot, he gets mad. He gets he yells at the coaches, you know, like he doesn't want to do that sort of thing. And so that's really the kind of the thing you have to deal with with Travis Kelsey is he wants to be out there. He wants to be in replay. He wants to see. I mean, heck, we saw in the Super Bowl when he got up chest to chest yeah. with Andy yeah. Reid in that viral moment. That was because he wasn't on the field for a particular play. So I think there is a balance here that Chiefs have to try to strike and try to tell Travis, hey, this is for, for your own good, for, for you to be in your most productive. But, you know, I will say with Travis, if you're looking at him as a tight end one, potentially, it's it's just tough. You know, father time comes for all of us. Um, there have been some struggles with drops at camp. Again, it's Travis Kelsey. You don't worry as much. But you add on to that that his uh, yards after catch have gone down every year. That's only natural. And I bring up this stat every year, I feel like. But he is four or five months younger than Rob Gronkowski. And Rob Gronkowski has had a Hall of Fame career, retired, came back, and now been retired for two more years. And Travis Kelsey is still doing that out here. So, uh, again, it comes for us all. And I think we all understand that. So um, the expectation on Travis Kelsey, Kelsey is always to be that top TE1, you know, and your fantasy drafts, all those sorts of things. All I'm saying is just 
brace for things to be maybe a little bit different, another step back, because that's what happens when you get older. Travis has already kind of pushed time to the future, but it's really difficult uh, to do that every single year. So if there's a tiny step back, I would anticipate that. And like I said, we'll see with the drops. If those continue the regular season, that can impact some production as well. Well, all I'm saying is that Jesse Newell is one of the best beat reporters you're going to find. He's always so generous with his time on X at Jesse Newell, Kansas City star. And again, folks, three years I've talked to Jesse, Kansas with the championship, Kansas City, two Super Bowls. Now they're going for a record third in a row. I believe in Jesse no matter what. Thank you, sir. Always appreciate it. I know you're busy. Got to get back out there again. But thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. Sounds good, Mike. Appreciate it. The NFL Team Preview Series is sponsored by Boom Fantasy. Your top choice for daily fantasy sports action. Boom Fantasy has the most innovative games that cater to both casual and hardcore fans. Win up to 500 times your entry only at Boom Fantasy. Download now on the App Store and Google Play. Use promo code FTN to get a no sweat bonus up to $100.